What's up, everybody? Sunday Sessions, episode 48, here to deliver you a ton of insight and information about scaling out your Amazon business. My name is Eric Castellano. For anybody who doesn't know, I've been selling on Amazon for about a decade. We crush massive numbers, ship about quarter million items per month to customers nationwide, and we also help thousands of Amazon sellers build out their e-commerce dreams. And something else we do is work exclusively with seven and eight figure sellers and help them crush massive numbers on Amazon. That's the name of the game for me, providing tons of insight, tons of value to help you grow your business. So welcome, my friends. How's everybody Sunday going? What we got going on? Romania in the house. Welcome, welcome. Ethan, what's up, brother? I see you up there in the top ranks. I would imagine margins are a little low. And if you want the full user experience, this is over on uh, on YouTube as well, so you can pop it up on the big screen. Also, all of the links and anything I share in the chat will be on YouTube as well. Kenya, wow, we got, we're global today, my friends. Uh, people from all over the world, I love it. Barry, what's up, brother? We got Miami, Turkey, Kenya, Istanbul, UK. I love it. See, this is the cool thing about the internet and, and social media. I get access to so many people, so many amazing people from all over the world. I love it. Natalia, what's up? So yeah, I'm here to provide and serve. So hit me with some questions. Anything y'all got? We got Canada in the house. I just had an amazing time in Canada. Um, Icecom. Amazing time. I went to Edmonton and Edmonton's such a beautiful city. I, I can definitely live there. The only thing is it's super cold, like eight months out of the year. Brazil as well. Indianapolis, another one from Brazil. I love it. It's super cold. But what was really interesting to me was how late at night it stays light out. It was like a, we were riding around on those bird scooters. It was like 11 o'clock at night and the sun was still out. It was shining. It was crazy to me. I've never experienced something like that. Now I know, like in 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 like Norway and um, some of the Scandinavian countries, Alaska. Some sometimes out of the year it's light for twenty four hours a day. But I've personally never experienced something like that. So it was really cool to see um, up in Canada having it bright out at eleven o'clock at night. It was awesome. Um, Dubai. Wow. I'm impressed today, guys and girls. Yeah, we I've worked with hazmat products before. We actually sell a fair share of hazmat products. Um, so step number one would be typing in hazmat in the seller central search bar and submitting an application to see if you're, or to get approval to sell hazmat FBA. And if you're not approved hazmat FBA, you could sell hazmat FBM until you get approval. And if you've already submitted an application, you could search Hazmat in the Seller Central search bar and check on the status of your application. But typically, they don't give a lot of insight as to where it is in the progression of your application. Yeah, Amazon payments do take long, especially if you're a new seller. Um, we're, we're our disbursements are every two weeks, so we're allocating our budget based on that two week disbursement. And something that we do is we actually, I, I know exactly how much, by usually day two or day three, I can estimate are saying what's up, I can estimate our disbursement check for you know 10 days out just by taking that 72 hours of data, um, the total disbursement amount so far, dividing it by 72, and then multiplying it by, what is it, 24 times 14, 336, multiplying it by 336, and that will give you your estimated disbursement so you can kind of plan how to allocate your funds. East Coast is beautiful, Collins. It's finally nice outside today. It's, it's This June has been feeling like maybe April for the past couple weeks. It's been a little chilly, so I'm excited for it to warm up. And actually, immediately after this call, me and Catherine, we're going to go on a nice little hike. Enjoy the outside weather. Oh, something I wanted to point out is a common question I get right around this time of year because we're creeping up on Q4 is, Eric, what's the best way to prepare for Q4? And it's like, listen... You don't get to into the, the NBA finals or the all-star game by having shit performance throughout the year. And then all of a sudden you want to be a part of the number one game of the year, right? So it's like, you need to make sure that your infrastructure is on point 
for Q1, Q2, Q3 before you can even consider dominating in Q4, right? Everybody wants to just skip the rest of the months and get right to Q4, but it's like, you ain't getting to the NBA Finals if you have a shitty performance in the rest of the season. And if you do get to the Finals for some God-given reason, right, for some fluke, you're probably not going to perform very well. Get on top of your game, my friends. Understand your numbers. Review your excess inventory. Get your account health in shape. You know, open up some new supplier accounts. Become a master at product research. All these things are gonna help you have a good Q4, but if you're not doing that now, then Q4 doesn't matter. It just doesn't, because you're not gonna optimize your workflow. And that's really what it's all about. Consistency, at the end of the day. The more consistent you are, the more successful your business will be. And that goes for any industry. Doesn't matter. Whether you're doing nails, you're nail tech, you're doing eyelashes, you're a massage therapist, you're in real estate, you're in the stock market, you sell on Amazon FBA, consistency is the name of the game. That's why I'm able to win all the time, because I'm consistent, even when I don't feel like being consistent. And that's the big difference, right? Because motivation only gets you so far. Some days I wake up and I'm not motivated. I'm not feeling it that day. I'm not ready to crush it. My, I'm just down and out, right? Not feeling it, not motivated, just not encouraged to do amazing things. But I still do them because I'm consistent. You got to make sure going into Q4 that your other quarters are tight and you know your numbers. I spend a lot of time working with high-level Amazon sellers, seven-figure sellers, eight-figure sellers, some of the biggest sellers in the space. Right, They consult with us to help them grow their business. And something I learned after visiting a lot of these companies one-on-one -on -one is they don't really understand their numbers. Right, There's, there's a lack of understanding in their financials, their P&Ls, um, their profits. And because of that, they're essentially just turning inventory. Right, so we come in and we help them understand this information and whip their businesses into shape. So one of the guys just reached out to me. I was visiting their warehouse a couple weeks ago and they just reached out and said they had their highest production day in their or highest production week in their warehouse ever. And it makes it makes absolute sense because it's just when we go out there, we boost the morale of the team. We implement the training necessary to level up. So of course it makes sense that two weeks after we left, they had their best production week out of, out of ever. Not just the past year, but ever. It makes absolute sense. They pumped out almost 7,000 units. Adam, when are we coming back to my warehouse? <laughs> I think your warehouse visits are done for 2023, Adam. I'm pretty sure Sebastian was just out there. But I know you're also getting that new space, so I'm excited about that for you, man, because you've really been crushing out huge numbers. You're a prime example of someone who took the information we provide and you know round two inner circle for second year in a row and you're running with it man and your business is thriving you got more employees you're expanding to new space your sales are growing um have you used 3pls and are your suppliers local so yes and somewhat yes yes we've used 3pls also a lot of people in our community use 3pls um, because sometimes it just doesn't make logistical sense to ship a product. Like let's say me, I'm in New York. It doesn't make sense for me to ship a product all the way from California to New York to my warehouse, uh, unload it, count it, discrepancy report, prep it, label it, ship it. It just doesn't make sense. I'd rather partner with a 3PL out closer to the supplier out in California to save on those shipping fees. All right, anything you can do to eliminate expenses is the name of the game when it's worth it. All right, so yes, we, we have used 3PLs. A lot of people in our community use 3PLs and they're definitely beneficial. And then as far as your question, Lana, um, about suppliers or local, some of them are local, but definitely not all of them. You know, you're, you're limited when you only source locally. You're definitely limited. You're definitely limited with your opportunities, and the goal is to expand your opportunities. Now, if your cash flow warrants it, right? A common misconception people have is they always need more suppliers. I need more vendors. I need some more suppliers. I need more wholesalers, right? But like, if you you can't even spend the amount of cash you got with your current wholesalers, then maybe you just need to leverage them for now. The solution is not always new wholesalers. It's not. 
Everybody thinks it is, but it's not. It's a boy, awesome, shaping up to be the best year of my life thus far. Amazing, Mike. I love it. That's great news, man. I meet so many cool people in this space. You know, I had the opportunity to spend some time with Mike last week and his wife and his business partner and his wife and like just learning about their families and, and just like that's what it's about for me, right? Because I can help anybody grow, grow a business, but if the business isn't adding value to your life and, and improving your, your home life and improving your relationships and improving your mindset, then what's it all for? Because money's great. Don't get me wrong. I love making a lot of money and I do make a lot of money. But like yesterday, for example, so yesterday, one of my other businesses, and this is a prime example of how money's not everything. Yesterday, in one of my businesses, um, I pulled in eight grand, right? Which is great for a side business. Pulled in eight grand yesterday and I felt like shit all day. By 12 p.m., business made me 8,000 bucks. Felt like absolute shit. Right. And I didn't feel good until about 8 p.m. when I decided to go to the gym. Right. And immediately after I left the gym, I felt so much better. Right. So it doesn't matter that I made eight grand yesterday in one of my side businesses. It didn't make me feel good. It didn't make me happy. Right. It didn't bring me joy. It didn't bring me peace of mind. I felt like shit until I went to the gym. And then me and Catherine went and saw a movie, the new one with Jennifer Lawrence, which was hilarious. Um, so we got to spend some family time together, right? Because Catherine's my family. And that is what made me fulfilled yesterday. Not the money. It didn't do what I thought it was going to do and what I always think it's going to do. Because that's not the solution. Family's the solution. Mindset's the solution. At least for me it is. Because money's cool. You can always make more money. But if you're not happy internally, none of that shit matters. We just went down on gross sales, but the crazy part is our net profits are higher than it was when gross sales were higher. It goes to show got to work smarter, not harder. Absolutely, Chris. If product has expiration date printed on it with blank, with black print, do we still need expiration sticker label on it? So, um, if the packaging is going to obscure that F, that expiration label, then yes, absolutely. We will add a, an additional um, label to it or have our expiration on the FN SKU, which is optimal for time saving and efficiency. Um, but like if you're selling a one pack and that label, the expiration label is visible, we will not add an additional label. But as soon as we bundle it and make two packs, three packs, six packs, nine packs, 12 packs, absolutely we're putting an expiration label on the outside of that package so it's very clear to amazon because what happens when you bundle items is they get all together and you might not have expirations facing on the outside and all it takes is amazon to miss that it's actually has an expiration date and then all of a sudden they mark it as unfulfillable you want to learn what i do it's so complex uh there's definitely a level of complexity to it you know it's definitely not passive income a hundred percent, it's it's definitely not passive income. Yeah, there's a definitely a level of complexity, you know. But I've been doing this for many, many years. I consider myself a skilled a skilled tradesman in the in the craft of selling on Amazon. Collectively, Sebastian and I have close to twenty years of Amazon selling experience. So it's not like this. I just woke up one day and had all this information. I've acquired it over time. You know, from a few things, trial and error, being real deep, deep in the marketplace, operating my own 60, 70 million dollar a year Amazon business, as well as helping thousands of other people build theirs has really been the way I've acquired my skill sets. And at the end of the day, I still don't have all the answers and that's okay. It's okay not to have all the answers. I have no problem admitting that, but I know someone who has the answer to the question if I don't have the answer myself. And I think that's one of the things that make us powerhouse consultants is I have no problem admitting I don't have the answer and finding the person who does to relay that information to our community. Frank, what's up? I'm interested. I, I'm not going to put my no, face there. It's okay. You don't have to show your face. What's going on? What are you doing this uh, Sunday? Well, I'm listening to you. Nice. I'm having, I'm having my brunch. Okay. And I'm watching um, Liam Hensworth. Okay. At the Extraction? Yeah, but they have Extraction 2 I, now. I love no, him. I, I know. This is, a little, this is a little too Rambo, you know. 
truthfully. Uh, it's just full of killing and fighting, not much interaction. But um, I was going to go sit outside. It was gorgeous. And I had to come in because it started pouring. Oh, wow. Well, we need the rain. You know, Daddy came home from Belmar yesterday, went fishing. He caught three blues. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And, and um, he, when he drove home, it was torrential rain and we didn't get a drop. Yeah. You know, I try to sit outside as much as I can, get some vitamin D. It's really important to be out in the sun. Yes. So yes. even though we have these light blue eyes and they, you know, say sunglasses, sunglasses, when you're just sitting outside, you still need to get that into the eye. Yeah. I Absolutely. love seeing you. I'm interested. You know, I love to listen to you. What about your business? I know. Uh, I know. And, and just let just to let you know, there's maybe 40 to 60 other people in here. So go do just your to, thing. I'm here. Just, <laughs> Yeah, so also Extraction is amazing. Keep watching this great movie. Me and Catherine <laughs> watched it the other day. And I'm glad I'm glad Dad went out and got, got some fish. Oh, he's yeah, like, he's <laughs> loving it. So he's just relaxing today. He's been upstairs. He's going to stay there. All right. All right. Cool love being, you. Love, love you. Okay. I love I'll, you more. Mwah. I'll see you. Bye. Bye. That's Big L. She's amazing. That woman. So blessed that I have her. Uh, do you guys have an order schedule which each with each vendor, or is it all as needed? For example, placing restocks once per month or per week. Uh, yeah, so we definitely implement an order schedule. Um, it is typically based on when we receive the catalogs and also the cash flow that's available in our business. Because if cash is tight, then obviously orders might need to be pushed off. You know, because the the main goal is paying vendors, right, that we have net terms with to continue those relationships and then placing reorders um, with the cash that's available for vendors that need cash up front and really managing your assets properly. So you're, you're essentially never running out of inventory. But, yeah, we have uh, we have our buyers on a schedule and we review that schedule twice a week with them in a meeting at our company. Oh, real quick, too. I'll post them right now before I forget. I'll post them in order of when they're happening over on uh, YouTube. Um, But there's three events coming up in August that I suggest being at um, as an Amazon seller. Uh, I just posted all the links over on YouTube. So the first one is in Chicago, August 1st to August 2nd. It's Ecom Summit. It's a brand new event to the Amazon space, uh, but I'm really excited about it. It's going to be a little more intimate. Um, There's going to be a little more access to the speakers. I'm going to be able to lead that event with actual tasks that you could implement into your company immediately to see the results and the ROI and the investment. Um, So if you're selling on Amazon and you're looking for an event to go to, Ecom Summit, August 1st and 2nd. The second is ASD. Which is just, it's, I think it's one of the coolest events to go to for Amazon sellers. A, it's a great place if you've never been to a trade show to meet with uh, vendors in person. Um, it's just an amazing experience. They're much more friendly than they are at, say, the Expo East, the Expo West, the sweets and snacks, the fancy foods, the um, toy fairs. They're just much more friendly to Amazon sellers. So definitely ASD on August 20th to the 23rd. We have some walkthroughs, which are exclusive to East Hill Drive members as well. Um, and then at the end of August in New Jersey, I think it's a caucus, is AMZ United, which is a whole wholesale-specific show. Um, also during that, I think either the day before or two days before, we're going to have a private dinner for our Inner Circle members. Um, probably on Hoboken overlooking the water. So that's going to be a cool experience. So I'm super excited about that. Um, but I'd love to see some of you at these events. You know, that's where a lot of the magic happens is is that in-person networking. Um, it says Newark, but when you look a little deeper, uh, Brian, it's it says it's at the Secaucus Convention Center on the website. Um, it says Newark at the top. Because I got the website pulled up here. But then when you click show details, oh, Meadowlands Exposition Center, which essentially is in um, Secaucus, 355 Plaza Drive. So it's a little confusing. 
confusing. But I think he put Newark in there because anybody traveling from out of state, that's the airport you fly into. But I know there's a lot of local, you know, Jersey, PA, New York sellers. So it's going to be great. You're going to be able to drive in for the day, hang out. And then there'll probably be an event either before, then after. I'm talking with Scott a little bit to kind of figure out what we can do to get everybody together for just some networking. Um, it's just tough when you got a couple hundred people, right? Because like, who's going to cover the expense of of renting out the place? You know, I know, I know, Amazon Lit doesn't want to cover it, and Scott doesn't want to cover it, so we get some sponsors to cover it. So there's just some fine tuning there. But there, either way, they're going to be amazing events, and we'd love to have you all there. I was selling this brand but they didn't know that i was selling it on amazon i placed a big order and they canceled my account amazon sells their product but do not respect their msrp should i persist so i would want i would want to get on the phone with the brand or a zoom call with the brand for this right because there's a few things that are negative about 1p relationship which is essentially anytime you see amazon selling a product that, that a brand product that Amazon hasn't created, it's called a 1P relationship, first party, right? And the, the negatives of 1P relationships that I like to pitch to these companies on phone calls is negative number one is they deal with the same customer support that 3P sellers deal with. So there's no like direct access or there's an, an issue. They're dealing with the same support we're dealing with, right? Second thing is Amazon has crazy long net terms, crazy long net terms, talking anywhere from 90 to 180 days. So as a brand waiting three to six months to get paid from Amazon, it's a long time, all right? Another con of a 1P relationship is minimum pricing. Amazon doesn't really care about your minimum or map pricing policy if you have one in place or what you think you should be selling your product at. They're going to drop the price, play around with the price until it meets the sales velocity that they're expecting for that product, right? And that's just, what, three or four of the cons of a 1P relationship that brands that are selling 1P deal with on a day-to-day basis. So our goal, and one of your goals, Venetius and everybody else in here, should be to pull away brands from 1P relationships and put them in your storefront. Good afternoon, Carson. Also, I just saw you locked in the brand workshop, man. Definitely dive into the brand workshop, Carson. It's going to change the game for you for brand exclusive relationships. Um, Sarah, that's a great, great question. If each ace in pack sells in a case of six, is it better to put each case on a pallet or fill bigger boxes up with the cases to avoid printing so many shipping labels? It depends on the size of the box and how many you could get in a bigger box. If it's a real tiny box, like let's say it's a pack of six, but it's uh, what's that stuff called? Chapstick, tiny little box, right? You don't want to be putting a shipping label on that tiny little box and an FN SKU and a do not separate sticker. Uh, you want to just put an FN SKU and a do not separate sticker and then put, you know, 20 of those little boxes in a bigger box, right, to be more efficient in your process. So it depends on the size of the box and how many you can get in a bigger box without going over the 25-inch maximum limit, length, width, and height, or the 50-pound maximum weight limit. So. Yeah, if it's a shampoo case of six, you figure it's probably, you know, 16 ounces. So that's six pounds. Um, Let's just call it eight pounds. So 50 divided by eight, you're looking like you could get about six of those cases in a box. So absolutely. If it makes more sense to put in a box for your workflow, then I would put six of those cases in a box. And so you're not having to add shipping labels to every single one. Um, Because you figure, let's say the box costs you, let's just say high end, a dollar fifty divided by six. Um, that's adding about twenty five cents per case uh, to your shipping costs. You know, so you could weigh the pros and the cons of that as well. You know, what's that one box label cost you, and the time it takes to put it on versus the twenty five cents additional to put it in a box. You know, so you got to play around with those numbers and make educated decisions based on your setup. All right. Well, listen, questions have dried up, so I'm about to go on a little hike and enjoy my day. Everybody have a phenomenal rest of your weekend. Enjoy life a little bit. You know, it's not always about work. Make sacrifices early on. Bust your ass in the beginning so you have some time for you in the future. All right, my friends. Stay blessed. Stay lit. Adios.